Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. You know, one thing that I do for my job a lot is go around and speak at conferences. I do probably two or three of these a year. And I like to do things hands-on with a demo, not just PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. PowerPoint definitely has its place and I use it, but I like to actually show code and give examples on the fly. To do this, I use Google Colab. And I wanna just very quickly show you the technique that I use to handle security and also just to give out a link to the conference participants so that they can actually follow along and execute code with me, particularly if we're doing sort of a workshop format. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. Usually a conference will be in either a workshop format or a presentation format where I'm essentially delivering from slides. Here I'm talking more about the workshop format. And if you're doing a presentation to a meetup or something like that, you may have the same situation. Meetups usually you can project from your own laptop and you don't have as many of the problems here that I'm talking about. But if you're dealing with a more professional conference where they've got an AV team and they're recording, usually they're going to want you to work on the hardware that they have there. In the case of this conference, you can see literally Literally the area that I was going to present from. So I'm given a computer. I don't necessarily know if it's Windows or if it's going to be Macintosh. Believe me, I have seen both at conferences. I even presented once at one of the Microsoft local offices and they had Mac equipment. So go figure. You just never know exactly what you're going to expect. So for a workshop where I would like to have people truly following along with me, I'm still expected usually to give slides ahead of time because the conference likes to put these slides onto their website so that people can download them and be ready. I sort of cheat for a workshop. Here you can see essentially the download that people would get for a conference that I just presented at. And this is on the public internet. You can download this as well. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video as well. But this is a presentation I did at the Society of Actuaries 2019 Predictive Analytics Symposium. Highly recommend it if you're in the actuarial field, work with the life insurance industry like I do when I'm not running my YouTube channel or teaching classes. This is my, these are my slides essentially. Now they export them as a PDF. I created these in PowerPoint. And these are just using my company's standard template. And you can see I presented this just literally a few days ago from the recording of the video. So how many slides do I have? Not a lot. Okay, here's the obligatory one, and this applies to this video as well. I am speaking as Jeff Heaton and not as the Society of Actuaries and certainly not as RGA. This is the company that I represented at, at this conference. So I mentioned, okay, in this slide, it's a workshop format. And look, that's my only slide. That's that's our ending slide. So I essentially cheat. I create a PowerPoint presentation with essentially one slide. And this one slide says, click here. And if you do, it takes you to a blog post that I have on my website. And here I actually put the link to the Colab, the Google Colab workbook that I'm going to actually be using. Now I don't directly link from the conference to Google Colab because of one very important reason. When you share your workbook, Google auto-generates this link for you. I'm a little afraid that maybe in a couple of weeks before I sent the presentation to the conference that it actually happens that I don't know maybe I accidentally delete the file or something and I have to regenerate it and suddenly the link changes. I control heatandresearch.com. I don't control the conference website so I can make updates here. It just gives me one additional layer. Now what you have to realize too when you're standing in front of a bunch of people in a conference room be it a meetup be it something much bigger that you traveled for half of them and, and that's really assuming will not have even downloaded the PDF. So they won't even have that link. Trust me, you don't want to read this link off in front of a conference. That is that is not good. So I do have a website. In the age of social media, I don't use my website nearly as much. I don't tend to blog as much. I put things right onto GitHub and right onto YouTube and whatnot, but it's still good to have a website. For the conference, I had two presentations, so I literally just write on the homepage of heatonresearch.com, and this will go away in about a week. I just put these two right up here for the SOA Predictive Analytics Symposium attendees. Click here, and I had two presentations. By the way, I'm putting up two YouTube videos on each of these presentations, two total. So you might want to check those out if those are interesting topics to you. So let me go ahead and click on one of these. So this is my feature engineering presentation. Now you'll notice it says editing. So I am essentially logged in as me. I am using my laptop computer right now to record this video. So I can edit this, I can save it, I can do all that sort of thing. I can also share it. So if you've just composed a conference proceeding, a notebook, and you would like to now share it, with those that you're going to be presenting to, you click the share button up here 
here after you've edited it, and it will give you this link. Now, I already had this link generated, so you would have to actually click a button to generate it, but you can give the levels a permission. So I'm going to say anyone can view. They'll be able to execute it too, they just can't change it. Or if you're using this for some sort of a smaller presentation, maybe over the phone or over Zoom with someone, you might want to just invite a couple of people, and then only those people can see it, and you may want to then give them edit access too to further collaborate. It's pretty cool. So that's where I got that URL from. Now let me show you what the conference attendees will see should they try to run this. And also, this is how I deal with the fact that I am presenting at a conference and I don't control the hardware. I might be presenting at a really, really piece of junk Windows laptop, and there's piece of junk Mac laptops too. The conferences, since they have 20 of them probably going, they don't necessarily invest in the latest technology. I can then get to Colab and have a GPU, have 16 gig, of, well, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and access to my files. So I might be entering this or the conference attendee might be using this. To simulate that, I am going to go to the incognito window. Now, if you have never dealt with the incognito window in Chrome before, it's really cool. I think it's designed for browsing. Well, I won't say what it's designed for browsing, but it is tells the browser to not access your cookies, to not remember any places you've been, so on and so forth. You get the idea. This is great. It doesn't, this is like logging into a brand new computer that you have never accessed before. So I am going to go ahead and run that URL. And here we see it. Notice I don't have, I do have a share option still, but it's saying sign in because I am not connected to this. Now, if your conference attendees want to just follow along, they don't really need to do anything. But if you want to actually try to execute something, you have to switch to playground mode. So open this in playground mode. Now, you still have another step, but try to run it. And it says Google sign in is required. So it's not probably too much to ask of your conference attendees to log in. They're most likely using their own computer sitting there. I'm going to sign in too, just so that I can now edit and execute code. Now, when it has me sign in, this is an interesting conundrum. I am on a conference machine, probably being recorded. I almost always have questions asked at the very end, and that pushes me right up to the exact time, and I have to leave very quickly. The point is, I don't want to log into my personal Google account because nine times out of 10, I forget to log out of it. This is why I do not log in to my social media accounts on machines that I do not own. So what I do is I have essentially a throwaway Gmail account and I click next, I enter my password. Now, I call this a throwaway account, but it's not really a throwaway account because I use it at each of the conferences. But the point is, I have nothing saved in this account at all. I don't even put the presentations in here because the presentations are saved with my Jay Heaton account, my main Google account. Here, I do the two-factor authentication. And if you haven't dealt with two-factor authentication, you totally need to be doing this. I use something called Authy. I just go to this account in Authy and I enter the number. Oh no, it's not being starred out. That doesn't matter for, for that. That code is valid for like 30 seconds. And you would also need to know my password. So this protects me to some degree that my account is not going to get hijacked. And if it does, it's, it's essentially a throwaway. They're going to basically be able to log in, maybe send a few emails as my goofy conference account, and then and that's it. They can't even change the password because that would require the, the two-factor authentication and that, that would not work either. So even if I forget to log out of the account, most likely the next conference presenter is not going to hack me or the conference themselves are not. But nonetheless, it's just a safety feature that I like. My Google account that I use for everything, it's it's linked, well, there's a couple of them. I have a separate one for the, for the YouTube channel, but it's just not something I want to risk. So I have this minimal conference account that I use for this kind of thing. Let me show you one last thing that you might be useful, and this is how to run R and Python code side by side in a Colab notebook, because I use this with conferences all the time. So to run R and Python in the notebook, this is not officially supported by Google, so this is absolutely a hack. I have a cell here that I say allow R. I run that. It loads an extension and the R to Python. This is essentially a Python package that allows you to run R inside a path Python. Does not support everything that R is capable of, so be aware of that. Test this out before you use it in front of 200 people. You run that, and now this is normal Python code, so this runs just fine. But here, you put percent percent %R in front of everything, and you can basically run R cells side by side in Colab without getting too extremely hacked. I mean, you you can run all kinds of crazy things in Colab if you're willing to have a half a page of shell script, but usually not something I want to do at an introductory level conference presentation. Okay, so those are just some of the tips that I have for how I present things and log into accounts that I have and execute code on remote computers that I don't control and maintain some semblance of security. Thank you for watching this video. Maybe I'll see you at a conference in the future.